So there's been a lot of news this week on the uh, violence in northern Iraq, especially around Mosul, Iraq's second biggest city. Um, if you're not familiar, what's basically happened is a uh, jihadist group known as the Islamic State, uh, let me get this right, the Islamic State in Iraq and the Levant, which is also known as the Islamic State uh, in Iraq and Syria, or the Islamic State in Iraq and al-Sham has uh, basically taken over the whole of northern Iraq um, with the exception of the Kurdistan region which is autonomous um, they've taken over Mosul and they're advancing on Baghdad and the situation now is very very tense um, I believe this is the most serious that Iraq has been since the peak of the US led war and occupation in about 2007-8 this is by far the most serious uh, situation the country is in. Now, long after the Americans left, when they left in 2011, uh, violence certainly didn't subside. Um, sectarian violence has continued in Iraq since then. Uh, bombings almost on a weekly basis. The violence this year has been especially bad. Um, obviously, I want to focus a bit on Iraq for this video, but I also want to expand that to certain other groups. Um, by groups I'm talking about, uh, jihadist groups, like here I'm talking about ISIS, also known as ISIL. But whatever the specific uh, issues as to why this group has got this powerful, um, it is actually part of a wider trend of violent jihad, which is being seen all over the world. Um, just to give you a little bit of background about ISIS, and I'm taking this from Wikipedia, um, they're an Al-Qaeda affiliate, but they're now considered to be more dangerous than Al-Qaeda, more radical. Um, they go back to 2004 and they were active in the Iraq war, but they are... Obviously, their power has really escalated in recent months. Um, they've been active in the war in Syria. Um, they entered that conflict seemingly at the end of 2013. Um, I totally reject this idea that Tony Blair and the coalition is responsible for these fascist thugs uh, and it actually makes me quite frustrated because I wish just for once people would actually put blame where blame belongs which is ISIS themselves um, in one of their recent propaganda stunts um, th they've issued a lot of very unsettling uh, footage but in one of their recent propaganda videos photographs they've shown um, dozens of handcuffed, unarmed Iraqi soldiers um, before they execute them in cold blood, basically. Um, in one particularly grisly footage, they, they held up the head of an Iraqi policeman and said, this is our football. Um, and, you know, there's no question about it, what sort of agenda this group has. They're fascists, pure and simple. Um, but they are Islamists as well and the two go hand in hand really. Now all over the world in different regions there's various different Islamist groups and they vary in the sort of level of radicalism, their level of uh, what exactly they want. So for example the Muslim Brotherhood is quite different from some of the other groups but most Islamist groups have some things in common. They all believe in basically spreading the Ummah violently the Ummah is a nation, nationwide state of Islam, like a universal caliphate, basically. Um, if we look at some other groups that have similar trends to ISIS, uh, the Taliban, obviously, in Afghanistan is um, an extreme fanatical version of Sunni Islam. Um, as if anyone needs reminding, they enslaved Afghanistan from the time they were in charge from 1996 to 2001, they enslaved that country. Um, they're still obviously very active, but there's various branches of the Taliban operating, and the Afghan Taliban, the Pakistani Taliban are not exactly the same thing. Um, the Karachi airport attack recently was blamed on the Taliban, and no one needs an introduction of how brutal that group is. Um, if we look around the world, in this decade, in the 2010s, there's been a number of new groups have formed. In Somalia, Al-Shabaab, um, well technically they formed in the late noughties, but 
it's another example of an extreme fascist Islamist group. Um, in Mali and Sardine, in Nigeria, Boko Haram has also got a lot of attention this year, kidnapping schoolgirls, uh, violently threatening anyone who doesn't suit their agenda. All over the world, there are examples of these sort of extremist groups, and clearly there is a trend. Clearly, there is a trend of violent extremist Islamism. Now, no doubt people will point out, well, you have extremists in Hinduism, you have extremists in Buddhism, you have extremists in Christianity. True, true, true. And in Judaism. True. But there is a difference. Number one, uh, most of those examples of extremist radical groups are not planning a worldwide agenda. Mostly they are domestic. For example, there are extreme Hindus, but they tend to be restricted to India. They don't spread their extreme Hinduism elsewhere. Um, extreme Buddhists tend to be restricted to Myanmar. Extreme Christians tend to be restricted to the United States. Um, there's parts of Africa where I would argue extreme Christianity is um, enforcing, for example, uh, homophobic laws and so on. But Nevertheless, extreme Christians, as unpleasant as they are, um, don't blow themselves up. They do not commit random acts of terrorism. So I do think Islam is unique in the way its extremists express themselves. It is unique and it is a very, very obvious problem. Um, now, all over the world, I often hear moderate Muslims say, these people have nothing to do with Islam, they pervert it. That may well be true, but nevertheless this is something that is found within the umbrella of Islam. So you can say they've got nothing to do with Islam. Well, the fact remains, almost everywhere where Islamism exists, you get violent jihad. And you get examples of these sort of fascist groups. Um, now I've spoken to Iraqis about the situation in their country and they, they'll, they'll just say these people are terrorists. Of course they're terrorists, I don't think anyone disputes that. But they are terrorists trying to violently spread their version of Islam. This is a fact. This is about violently spreading uh, their their idea of what the caliphate should be. And the biggest victims are actually the other Muslims. That's the sad irony about it. Um, so I'm not trying to make any particular message with this video. It's just an observation. ISIS is just one of a long list of fascist Islamic groups that are imposing terror wherever they get a grip of power. And it is it's poisonous. And one of the most dangerous things about this ideology is these are people who are not afraid of death because they believe that when they go to heaven they'll have 72 virgins. Um, and when you're dealing with someone who's not afraid of death who are not afraid of their own mortality, that's incredibly dangerous. Because how the hell do you negotiate with people like this? In terms of what response should be taken to the ins uh, in insurgency in northern Iraq, um, I'm sceptical that any sort of US intervention would help the situation, given just how deeply flawed um, the 2003 intervention was. Whatever the moral arguments about that intervention, no one can dispute Iraq became a hellhole afterwards. So um, Obama says there will be no boots on the ground etc. I really hope he sticks to that because he should learn something from the Bush years. Um, having said that I still resent anyone trying to claim that oh the actions of ISIS are the fault of Tony Blair and George Bush. That's bullshit. The actions of ISIS are 100% resp the responsibility of ISIS. These thugs are entirely responsible for their own actions. So when people try to change the subject by talking about the 2003 intervention, I think basically what they're doing is trivialising the responsibility that ISIS themselves have. And what they are doing in Iraq is utterly despicable. This is a country that has been through more than most countries. It needs peace, it needs to move on. But so long as this fascist organisation is trying to take over, um, Obama is right to say that it will plunge the region into chaos. And I, I personally believe that Saudi Arabia um, has a lot 
to answer for here. So does Iran. Those two big Middle Eastern powers are the two power brokers of the... Well, I'm repeating myself, but they are the two power brokers of the entire region. I believe what we are seeing here is a Shia-Sunni schism. And it is causing rivers of blood. Far, far worse than anything um, we could talk about in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. The real conflict in the Middle East is not between Jews and Palestinians. It is between Shia and Sunni. And that's got nothing to do with divide and conquer. It's to do with stating the facts. And at the very heart of that conflict is Iran, Saudi Arabia. Those two countries have enormous responsibility for what is happening in this region. And actually on this occasion I do think America should abs have absolutely minimal involvement and so should Britain. Because we, we got involved and it was a mess. So we should have absolute minimal, if any, involvement in this. Um, the Obama administration supported Nouri al-Maliki second term in office so the logical thing to do would be to support their ally but in the end of the day this is an Iraqi problem and I, I just hope the Iraqi government um, can take back control of their country because if this organization gets control of Baghdad and takes over Iraq it is going to be it, it's hard to imagine how bad that will be I mean the situation is bad enough as it is but if they take over, it's frightening really to think of the consequences of what that would mean. So I, I hope ISIS can be defeated, but they should be defeated by an Iraqi force. And it's disgraceful that I, I don't want to comment on the bravery of individual Iraqi troops, but it is a disgraceful that a force of 800 ISIS fighters defeated a force of 30,000 Iraqi troops. Now, I wasn't there. I don't want to slur the Iraqi troops. I don't want to sort of... But if the reports are accurate that they took off their uniforms and ran away, that says something about just how badly organized the Iraqi army is. And it does make me question, well, what was all those coalition resources going into if these guys cannot even handle a bunch of terrorists, basically? That's concerning. Because it shows this is a country that is not prepared to handle itself basically that should be the way it should be but clearly I, I would say on this occasion Washington and London need to have absolute minimal involvement and the pressure should be put on Iran and Saudi Arabia to sort this shit out because this is a proxy war basically between Shia and Sunni that is being waged right across the Middle East Iraq is the epicentre so is Syria, but it's it's a very unpleasant situation, and it's like Islamic groups around the world, Islamist groups, are competing to see who can just be the most fascist, the most brutal, the most anti-human, and it's utterly barbaric what these people are doing. Um, look at Nigeria this year. Look at the rivers of blood spilt by Boko Haram. Um, what more evidence do you need? Um, look at Al-Shabaab in Somalia. That's the organization that prevented famine aid from getting to victims because they thought it was a Western plot. Look at Ansar Dean in Mali. There's so many examples of these sort of groups. So, this is a worldwide conflict in the sense that it's an ideology that is destructive wherever it is. I'm talking about violent Islamism. I'm not talking about Islam, I'm talking about violent Islamism. And any honest Muslims, I believe, should be deeply concerned about this. And they should be speaking out about it. Because this is not some sort of, just saying, oh, they're just terrorists is all very well. They are terrorists, but they are also Islamist terrorists. They are spreading their ideology violently in the name of Islam. You can say it is a perversion of your faith. Fair enough. Probably it is. But don't say it has nothing to do with Islam, because this is a unique problem within Islamic countries. And yes, there's examples of it being spread to non-Islamic countries, but that only shows how hell-bent and ambitious these people are. So I think there's some serious reflections to be done here about what has happened in northern Iraq. And it's just really a wake-up call for what is happening all over the world, wherever this violent 
horrible fascist ideology exists. True, these organisations are not exactly the same, but there are some similar trends to be found within their thinking. Uh, usually it's connected with extreme propaganda that has little basis against Western ideals. For example, them trying to make out that aid workers are some sort of Western imperialist, things like this. There's not much more to say really, but I really, really hope that there can be unified action against this poisonous ideology, Muslims and non-Muslims alike, because it hurts everybody. Thanks for watching.